How's it going, everybody? It's Josh, KI6NAZ. You know, there are a lot of antenna analyzers out on the market. And for many ham radio operators, they look online for a ham radio, quote unquote, uh, antenna analyzer, and they see a pretty expensive price tag, often more than uh, some of the best HTs you can get on the market. Now, that's not to say that that uh, price isn't fitting for the quality of product you get. However, there are always surprising things coming out. And this guy right here, the Nano VNA, pretty impressive for the price tag, about $50 online. It's Chinese. It's a little... Uh, I wouldn't call it the most durable thing in the world. This is actually a vector network analyzer, and today on the Ham Radio Crash Course, I'm going to explain what that means and how you can use this with amateur radio. If you find content like this valuable and you think that it should be in front of other people, potentially those that don't know about ham radio yet, click the thumbs up button. It helps out the YouTube algorithm and keeps everything moving upwards and onwards. I appreciate the support. Thank you. So a network vector analyzer is a piece of test equipment that we use for product development. And that could be cables, it could be antennas, it could be amplifiers, any component of something that is involved in the RF chain, uh, you can use a network vector analyzer for. The Nano VNA is an extremely portable network vector analyzer and you get a lot of the functionality that you would expect out of a larger unit although this is a lot simpler and it is less uh, precise with its measurements but the principles remain the same that separates it from a lot of amateur radio users there is a bit of learning a learning curve to learning this that uh, you will notice when you pick it up if you're interested in it I found these online on AliExpress where the creator develops his. It's $50, takes a long time for shipping. They're also available on eBay and Amazon. I can't say uh, if AliExpress's version from the creator or the copies that show up also on AliExpress, but eBay and on Amazon are any different. Um, I'm not prepared to make a comparison on that, but there is a link in the description for the one on Amazon if you'd like to check it out. So what makes this compelling is that it operates from 50 kilohertz all the way up to 900 megahertz. That puts it right within the majority of our amateur radio bands, which means we can connect an antenna here and we can do some simple analysis on it to determine how good of a match our antennas are to the radios that we want to operate on for the frequency that we want to operate on. So I'm going to put this through a quick demonstration. I'm going to put a couple of antennas on it. I'm going to walk you through how to use it um, once it's been calibrated. And then I will do a comparison against my rig analyzer, which is devoted specifically for amateur radio. So very quickly, this is what ships with the Nano VNA. There you have the main unit. And you have a pretty nice box. There's also a foam bit, which I do keep just in case I you know, pack it away. All right, inside you get two testing leads. You get what's called a short and the reason it's called a short is the pin in this connects directly to the outer housing, which would be a short to ground. You have a through, which there is no pin. There's just a hole. That means the pin is in free space, so it's an open connection. And then lastly, you have a 50 ohm resistor, which is what you calibrate to. So. You use these three units with this cable connected to this port to do your calibration for amateur radio. This unit connected to this one is your through connection. You use one piece of the coax out, another piece out, and then it connects to something that you're testing, like a filter, and then that gives you the readout. We don't need the second one for amateur radio. We just need this one, the first test unit, which is channel zero. So first thing right out of the box. I've taken my Nano VNA, turned it on, I've connected the male to male SMA cable and the female to female uh, barrel connection or adapter. Now I wanna set this for the HF band specifically and to do that, click on the right corner, go to stimulus and I wanna set the start to, uh, let's do uh, six megahertz and that M means megahertz and I wanna set the stop to 60 megahertz. I don't need much more outside of that. Okay, and so now we're blanked out the screen. It's not reading the high portion that this can go up to 900 megahertz. We don't need that for HF, although you could use that for whatever antennas you wanna test on. So now we're gonna do a calibration. We're gonna go back to here. We're gonna click back, and then we're gonna click cal. We're gonna click calibrate. So with the cable, with just the female adapter on it, I'm gonna put this away from the unit, and I'm gonna click open. Don't touch the cable or anything, click open. Now it dumps down to short. So we're gonna take the short, 
SMA connection, which is this guy. It has the pin that's grounded directly to the body of the SMA connector. I'm screwing this on by hand. Normally you'd use a torque wrench to do it. If you're in a lab setting, I still recommend a torque wrench if you're going to be playing around with SMAs a lot. It'll keep them, keep them safe, not damage them, and you'll get a good connection. And then you're going to click short. Now it's asking for a load. And the load in this case is affectionately a dummy load, what we call it an amateur radio. Center pin, insulated from the body of the connector, 50 ohms resistance. We're going to connect it. And we're going to click load. And then we're going to stop. We're not going to do isolation or through because we don't need that for this testing. We're going to hit done. OK, now we have a new screen, basically. Everything's blanked out because we don't have a connection. I'm going to disconnect this. And I'm going to connect my HF antenna, which I am connected to my hex beam at this point. So we're at, where is it? 7 megahertz, no bump, no dip in the, in the antenna yet. But we see some up, up here. So we're going to move along until we get to that. I'm going to show you a change. We're showing it in log mag right now. I want to change the format. We're going to go back. We'll go back. We're going to change the display to format. We want to show SWR. So now we get a different display. Okay, so I'm going to start scrolling over here. You can use this wheel to scroll and click. Okay, our first major dip, lowest point, is at 14.100 with an SWR of 1.16. That is the 20 meter portion of my hex beam. Let's keep going to this dip here. What is that? There's another 1.53 at 22.20 megahertz. I'm going to go further on to this dip. Lowest point there, 28.140. We have 1.14, and that being 10 meters. So these dips you see along the way are all dips in the antenna. And all the way over here, I believe, is 6 meters. So this is also a touchscreen, although it's not the best touchscreen. You can uh, take your stylus and just click on the 1 and drag it. And that'll help you a bit. So right, right at 46.50, we have 1.0 SWR. So hey. So that tells me we got a bit of tuning problem with my uh, 6 meter portion of the X-Beam. I'll have to get on that. But that's good information. So this gives us a SWR reading, but what if we want to look at our impedance of the antenna? Well, we can do that too. Go back up here, hit back, hit back until you get to display. We want to change the trace to trace, trace 2, which is our Smith chart. Okay, so that portion of the antenna, which is at 46.500 megahertz, has a relative impedance of 50 ohms, like right in the middle of that Smith chart. And that's what it's telling you. And these circles are the entire band space that we're looking at. We're looking from, what was it, 6 megahertz up to 60 megahertz. So that's what all these circles are. That's how out of whack or out, how out of the 50 ohm space this antenna is as you go along this megahertz scale. Let's dive back up to one of these low ones, like 14, or what was this guy? I think he was 15. Oop. Sorry, I'm saying 14 megahertz and 15 meters interchangeably. See, this is kind of the tough part about the uh, clicking this guy. OK, we're right there. So if we go right there, it's about close enough. At 28.140, we're again at 50 ohms impedance. So hey, that's good. That means the antenna is kind of right where it needs to be. It's a good match to my radio. So let's go up to 14. Okay, we're back at 14, and boom, we're at 57, point, uh, 57 ohms, which is a bit up, but not bad, and we're at 1.16 SWR again. So that's kind of how you can use this. There's a lot of options in this. This is, goes way beyond what you necessarily need for ham radio, but it's good to know. So as a comparison, I brought out my trusty rig expert AA170. I don't make these anymore. This is an old one. And I'm going to do a quick scan of my SWR. We're going to go back to that 40 meter band. I'm sorry, 20 meters. OK, so that takes me to 14175, and I'm going to do a scan. So we still get this visual effect, right, as we see the SWR printed on the screen. Fantastic. And if we want to, we can scroll 
exactly to where that dip is. Maybe increase the scale a bit. And boom, there's our dip. Kind of an interesting, that's kind of an interesting dip. There may be something going on with my antenna. I'll have to look into that. Let's go to 10. And there's that 28850. And there we see our 1.5 SWR dip. And then it trails off. We can increase the scope of this. Now we're at 3400 kilohertz. So we can see exactly where that dip comes in. Boom, right there, and there's your, your dip that you can visualize. So same kind of thing. This is a little bit bigger than the uh, Nano VNA for size comparison, but you get the same idea. Now this isn't showing ohms, right, of resistance, so we need to go into other things to show that. If we go to, so it looks like there's a portion of the band where we are, whoop, where we are at 50. Let's go back to 20. So there's your smooth kind of up from 50, it goes a little high and then comes back down. And we saw that on the Nano VNA with the Smith chart. Same kind of principle, we're displaying it a little bit differently though. So for $50 American, I think the Nano VNA is a pretty cool tool that you could use in your shack. This is not something that you'd necessarily want to have portably around your pack. I would keep this in its little display case that it has its little plastic case in its little safety sleeve because you don't know what's gonna happen to it when it's bumping around in your bag. May not be the best choice for field day, but it's not a bad choice for just sitting in your shack and dinking around with antennas, which is what a lot of us do. $50, hard to beat. Uh, if anyone has shown any kind of interest in RF or antenna building, you know, this would be a great stocking stuffer for them. Tis the season for that kind of stuff. So again, I will post the link to Amazon. It's going to be more expensive than the AliExpress. You're going to get it from probably a different supplier. Like again, I can't really comment on the quality of any of these. This one came from Amazon and it works great. So with that said, I hope you enjoyed this. If this was helpful, give me a thumbs up. If I missed something or you'd like to see something, go ahead and post in the comments below and I'll try to make a video explaining whatever it is to the best of my ability. And again, if you haven't, please subscribe. I'd appreciate it. I am Josh, KI6NAZ. You're watching the Ham Radio Crash Course and I'll talk to you later. See ya.